So I will talk uh, a little about uh, clinical parapsychology, but in another perspective, uh, uh, mixing it with uh, the current and contemporary a uh, rise of uh, a lot of complementary or alternative medicine. The name has changed. Uh, recently, the National Institute of Health in the US uh, has selected the current denomination of uh, integrative and complementary health approaches. And my uh, question is that uh, you know that a lot of people use this kind of uh, medicine. Uh, it's often the first treatment option they choose for a lot of disease from the body or, or mental health. And this attitude is observed despite a lot of controversy about the efficiency or efficacy of uh, this kind of integrative and complementary health approaches. So the link I try to make with uh, exceptional experiences is that we see in the clinical practice with people who have some kind of exceptional experiences, mainly in Western, uh, Western people, that it's something uh, we came very often in uh, our practice, uh, and we, we we listened this morning a lot of talk about the stigmatization of these people, of these experiences, and we can understand that by, because of this taboo, a lot of people uh, try to circumvent, to, to go away uh, from the stigma, from the marginalization, and they adopt heterodox beliefs or alternative religious worldview uh, that led them to this kind of practitioner. And sometimes they develop some addiction, for instance, to, uh, I don't know, uh, to mediumship or by, by phone, phone uh, psychic or things like that, and this kind have some negative effects on them. But sometimes it's, it's also a way for them to develop, to integrate their own exceptional experiences as a fate, as a gift uh, to, uh, to become a practitioner of themselves. So we, we have this, this question of the benefits of the risk of alternative care pathway for people who live exceptional experiences. Okay, <laughs> my slides are too huge for, for this uh, screen. Okay, uh, clinical parapsychology, I'll just come back a little about the, the history. Uh, the, 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 um, the notion was coined by, uh, wow, <laughs> by, <laughs> by Laurence Jane Bendit, who was a thesophist and a psychiatrist, uh, who wrote a letter, who was published in the Journal of Parapsychology, saying that, uh, um, Clinical parapsychology is an alternative research program to academic parapsychology. And after that, there is a lot of uh, psychoanalysts like Eisenberg, Servadio, and others who have this interest about the psychotherapy of uh, strange phenomena in psychotherapy, but uh, it's more like uh, with informal networks that this clinical practice has developed. Uh, we heard about Beth and William Rawl uh, around the parapsychological center. They began to develop a family psychotherapy for people who have a portuguese, for instance. So during like uh, 50 years, it was something who was not very published in academic journals, not well known, there was no training, but things are uh, changing uh, slowly. There's a lot of PA symposium or panel that took uh, like l l last uh, 40 years. You can see there's a, a kind of uh, more regularly interest about this clinical parapsychology. Uh, even Robert Morris uh, said at his last PA convention that the, the future of parapsychology is clinical. Uh, and the PA has developed, but it was a short life. The name was a Parapsychological Association Anomalous Experiences Committee by uh, Christian Simonsmore. But uh, it was very difficult to uh, uh, organize, organize something with uh, clinicians from all over the world. But we tried to develop a dedicated conference to, for, for this topic. The first one was in 1989 uh, by the Parapsychological Foundation. And he, he has uh, like uh, 20 observers and 10 speakers and published uh, four years later a book about psi and clinical practice. And more recently, uh, Christian Simons Moore with the Rhine Research Center uh, developed another uh, conference on that topic. But one of the more, most recent and 
very, uh, rec rec very nice effort was the international expert meetings. The first one was launched in uh, the Netherlands in 2007 uh, with 20 participants from eight countries. And one of the outcome of this uh, meeting was a book, uh, A Perspective of Clinical Parapsychology, with a very huge bibliography by Gerda Volman about all the relevant paper in the literature, and the book can now be downloaded for free on the PA website. Uh, after this first meeting, there are uh, four other, wow, <laughs> it's terrible to, 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 to meet my new PowerPoint, okay. <laughs> so we have Freiburg in 2010, Paris, Eudebert, and very recently we did another one in Nancy. Not with the same people uh, each time, we try to attract new clinicians, but we also have new students coming in the field. So, um, can we say that clinical parapsychology is an uh, integrative and complementary, complementary health approach? Is it the way that we have to see yourself or maybe as other people, external people, see our, ourselves? Um, I will follow the diagnostic or diagnosis of, made by Martina Belsmerk, who, uh, who was a clinician and who was working at the IGPP. And uh, she asks several questions. Uh, does the regular healthcare system of our service that meet with this need to, to, to counsel exceptional experiences? And she said that clinical parapsychology is not part of a regular healthcare service. So it's something to be done. Uh, counseling is primarily offered by private organization and mainly around the parapsychological research center who are often solicited for this kind of question. It's a kind of side effects of a research institution, like the cost of share with uh, Jan Tierney. Do we have clinicians that have the expertise to deliver that help? Uh, there is some open mind in psychotherapy. We heard about transpersonal psychotherapy, but only with any special training, uh, a common training, a uh, common basis. Do we have clinical approaches that meet the standards for empirically supported treatments as required for other areas of counseling and psychotherapy? Uh, until now, there is a lot of inspiring ideas, but uh, the empirical basis is quite missing. Our uh, conclusion was that uh, using the term clinical parapsychology is not the best choice. She, she, she preferred to use clinical psychology of uh, exceptional experiences. And the last thing is not working, yes. But she said that in 2008, and I think we can still have the same answer uh, 11 years after. I can give another um, perspective from Nancy. It's quite, uh, it's, so it's the university where, where I am. Um, our um, journey with Thomas Raberon is that uh, in 2007, uh, we created inside the EMI, within the EMI, uh, a free counseling service for people who were sensible to exceptional experiences. And we had, uh, without any advertising, a uh, hundred of people coming for this kind of counseling. Uh, and after two years, we tried to develop uh, an independent uh, uh, center, the Center for Information Research and counseling on exceptional experiences. So it's been, it's been uh, 10 years ago. And this, this independency uh, will serve us to um, not have confounding demands about uh, I want to be tested in a laboratory, I want uh, a verification of my gift, uh, anything like that. But it, it's always come, but we, we need more uh, clear uh, offer. So Thomas Rameron, you, you know him, no? Uh, she, she did a P, she, he did a PhD on exceptional experiences in Lyon. I did uh, another one in Rouen. Uh, we publish a lot of articles and books about that. And currently, we have a, a, a very mi miracle opportunity, a miraculous opportunity, because we work in the same academic setting in Nancy. Uh, he's a professor. He, he writes he write some uh, textbook in psychology, clinical psychology. I, I wrote some books or the article on the history of, uh, of psychology of, on parapsychology. So we can work together. And we have um, a courses uh, of 18 uh, hours uh, on trauma and clinical experiences. Uh, for graduate students, but we have other uh, educa uh, educative uh, opportunity to speak about uh, the interest of uh, exceptional experiences. And uh, no six PhD students are working on that topic with different approach. So I, I will 
describe because it's not clear. Uh, Arthur is working on uh, the in intercultural approach of this kind of experiences. Uh, Samuel is working on the magnetic healing magnetizer uh, and, and exceptional experiences. Mariana, who is there uh, on who has a poster, uh, is working on, on near death experiences near death experience on art. Uh, Ellen is working on abduction and UFO sighting experiences. Uh, Nawal is working on na Nawa, uh, near death experiences, but in the reanimation uh, medical center. And Marine Mutis is working on terminal lucidity. So it's uh, pl plenty of avenue of new topic, uh, very new for the French uh, university. But some question arise from this situation um, and, and from the students. Is the clinical practice with exceptional experiences a basic skill that we, we, we need, we can ask from every clinical psychologist? Another question is for what it is useful? And the final one is, is it possible to pursue an academic career after a PhD on that topic? Uh, I, I hope the, the answer is good for Mariana, but... Uh, the possible answer I, I have myself, but you may discuss that, is that there is a high prevalence of exceptional experiences and paranormal beliefs. So it's a common topic for any human science. And according to some survey, every health professional has to face one time in, in his career, at least, one people who came uh, to, to, to need for care because of this kind of expenses. And a lot of professionals, 83% uh, of them, think they, they are not trained to deal with such cases. I'm wondering who are the 70% uh, who think we are, or they, they can do something with that. For what it is useful? What we see in the psychopathology is that exceptional experiences are everywhere. You can find them in psychosis, in neurosis, in uh, borderline cases, in depression after morning, and, and even in healthy subjects. So you can treat every kind of uh, the general psychology, cl clinical psychology perspective with this kind of experiences. You don't need a specific setting to meet people with this kind of experience. So you don't have to uh, make something very special to, to have cases like that. And for the clinician to deal with this kind of spiritual, religious, alternative worldview, help them to develop a kind of cultural sensitivity. And for the final question, I think there is several avenues for new research, communication, and publication, uh, because a lot of these topics are still marginal or taboo, but it's a, it's a mistake. Or, uh, there is plenty of uh, new <coughs> things to discover. And they are very attracting for, for current uh, psychologists because they are at epistemological crossroads. There is a new alliance at least in France, between, between psychoanalysis, clinical psychology, neuroscience, and parapsychology. And exceptional experiences are very, uh, a very good object to study all these perspectives uh, together. And when we have students in front of us, it's a very attractive topic to have them not looking for their smartphone and hearing us. Um, so teach clinical psychology through this kind of experiences is very, very useful. But there's other over level, uh, high levels perspective. Is it possible to develop uh, an university-based counseling service? dealing with this kind of thing. Maybe it's, it's too much to ask. Is it relevant to create a special diploma for a clinical uh, psychology of exceptional experiences? Maybe it's too much provocative, I don't know. And we have this question, my beginning question is about the integrative and complementary health approach on the other practitioner doing, I don't know, acupuncture or magnetism or uh, voyance or mediumship, etc. How do we work with them? Uh, or we, are we in competition to deal with ghosts? We use a psychometrium, you, you use a mediumship, but we don't work together. Or we can collaborate on, how can we collaborate with this kind of people? Thank you for your attention.